um, just as a high level, what's the goal of Cloud Vision? Um, it's a broad mandate. It's to make networks simple to manage and monitor. And there's all sorts of different ways we can talk about how to make networks simpler to manage. We talked about this last year in April. Um, today, we're just really going to dive on their monitoring pipeline and how that works under the hood. So for monitoring, there's really kind of two key attributes that we want to provide to people. One, give really great real-time visibility, like let people understand what's happening in the network right away, and also give really great historical visibility. Um, I think this stuff is easy to talk about, but it's probably a little bit clearer in a demo. So I have two really short um, bits here. Um, after my talk, uh, Paul's going to be giving really in-depth uh, demos of um, use cases end to end. These are just some more uh, pinpointed of how our architecture empowers the product. So um, this first one is going to be um, just uh, talking about how, how we do real time. So here's one of our uh, views. This is a per device view showing uh, a device's BGP state. You can see we have seven established peers, a bunch of information about BGP, and then um, you know, here's details of all the peer information. I'm going to go ahead and run a clear IP BGP command on the device. And as soon as I press Enter, you'll see the, all right, there's a the video. Um, you'll go ahead and see um, the pie chart empty. All the peers got unestablished, went to an active state, and then immediately went back into um, an established state. So you can see in that seven seconds, um, all of the peers got lost, all of them got rejoined. Uh, if you were polling even at like a 10 second interval, you would, you would miss this data. Also, polling is just incredibly expensive for the switch and for the platform. So um, with real time, um, we really want to provide something that gives you information at a nanosecond um, time stamped granularity with an end-end latency of an order of 100 milliseconds. So when something changes on the switch, we should be able to just display that to the user um, essentially instantaneously. Um, and that's really powerful if you're you know, trying to validate that changes to your network are actually working as you'd expect. It also lets you provide some really great analytics. And then on the historical data front, um, we don't want people to have to be staring at their network all day. You want to be able to go back and look at how things change over time. You might get a report about something was weird yesterday or a week ago or a month ago. And so one of the things that we offer in our product is a timeline at the bottom of the screen here. So this is a device's MAC address table. And when um, you can take this timeline and scrub it back in time and see how the system looked like at any given previous moment. So here's a MAC address table with more entries at that time. Um, you can scrub around. You can then go ahead and compare that versus the previous time. So we press the compare versus an hour ago. You can pick any arbitrary amount of time or compare two different devices. Here you can see one MAC address changed port channels, was moved. Um, like five or so um, devices, uh, MAC addresses were removed, and one were added in, in that time period. Uh, so this historical visibility is really useful for building all sorts of um, understanding about how your network has been performing. Uh, so architecturally, we have to provide for that. Uh, but we can't just do it on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, one of the things we really like about Cloud Vision is it operates across a wide variety of network types. So we're working in enterprise data centers, we're working in the campus, we're working in hospitals, in stadiums, in banks, um, in art museums. Uh, it's kind of all over the place. And it's a single product, which is great, but that means that we have to expose information about IGMP and, um, and PIM and LACP and CTP and MLAG and um, OSPF and you know, pick any acronym soup you want. Like people, somebody's going to want to care about it and, and see it. So our architecture has to ingest a lot of different types of data. And finally, this has to work at scale. Uh, all this is fun and games if it works with 10 devices, but we need this to work for thousands of devices with hundreds of thousands of interfaces. Uh, and it has to be in a way that customers can deploy it. So um, Cloud Vision came out as an on-premises product with a three-node cluster. Uh, since I last talked in 2017, we've introduced a cloud service. And it's really nice that our same architecture stack runs both, it's, it's the same stack um, with some slightly different packaging components that works both in the cloud and on-premises. And so it really scales well. Yeah. Ryan, just to level set here, we're talking about monitoring and observability, and we've discussed NetDL and now Cloud Vision. How do those tie together? Yeah, so, so Cloud Vision is uh, our product for managing all of your kind of wired fabric, so your campus, your data center fabric. 
In, in the guts of Cloud Vision is this really powerful data pipeline, and that's a core component of, of NetDL. So this is this common infrastructure of how do you ingest tons of state, uh, and Cloud Vision then has a number of applications built on top of it that exposes uh, that state. So monitoring, say, BGP, or, or providing kind of more specific applications there. So is, is it safe to say that Cloud Vision is pulling data from NetDL, and is, is the action point for that, or am I off base? Yeah, I, I think that we, um, the way I think of it is Cloud Vision's like the, the core database, the, the centralized. I'll, I'll get into. A, I'll show you a picture of that in a second uh, of where this fits in. That piece is that powers the like the that powers the core of, of Cloud Vision. So NetDL is kind of that centerpiece that makes okay. us, this work. End that makes sense. Thank you. So. At the, at the highest level of what Cloud Vision is, and um, it is, is this picture. We have a bunch of networking devices. Um, these networking devices are streaming state into Cloud Vision. You know, this is deployed as on-premises or as a, our cloud service. Um, it's processing this data. It's storing this data. It's analyzing it. And then it's exposing it to the user or to other applications. So let's start by diving into what's actually happening on the device. And, and Ken talked a little bit about this, but from, from day zero, I don't know, back in 2008, when EOS started, um, started off, we have this, the same diagram we've been showing for a very long time, a centralized database, SysDB, with a bunch of agents around it. It's a pub-sub model. We don't have our agents really talking to one another. They're all talking through the centralized database. So this led us, back in 2015, introduce a streaming agent which is really just a fire hose of all of the state in the system, and we can stream it off the box. And we use GRP gRPC to stream this off the box. Um, this can be a standalone uh, agent, so some of our largest cloud Titan customers will, will use this agent to ingest the data and analyze it themselves. Uh, and this is also what powers Cloud Vision um, to get uh, really fine-grained data. So everything's kind of time-stamped at the point that it changes on the box and then streamed out back up to Cloud Vision. Inside Cloud Vision, a couple things are happening. Um, we have a data pipeline. Um, this is, you know, I think the, the core, one of the core NetDL components, and then a variety of processes that are doing interesting things with this data. So we're calculating events, we're aggregating the data, um, we're, we're normalizing it. We have a bunch of provisioning and compliance applications, which we've talked about in previous periods. You know, how to make sure that the device is running the correct configuration, upgrading the software. And then we expose this data via a variety of APIs. And we have some demos about extensibility coming later from um, uh, after Paul's talks. So this picture looks similar with less squiggly lines than the EOS picture. But all of these systems are talking to a centralized database, just like we had that kind of centralized database for SysDB. So like we have one EOS that works across all of our platforms. Cloud Vision, the way that it's been built in this way, you can have a, a centralized data pipeline plug in a bunch of different applications, uh, and it, it really scales out well. So let's dive into, into the data pipeline. Uh, so um, under the hood, it's a, it's a pretty extensible platform. When data, data comes in um, and it hits an API server, so when this data is coming from that switch, that timestamp data, hits the API server, and the API server does two things with it. The first thing it does is it stores that data. Almost all of our data goes into HBase, which provides you know, some really great scaling properties. It also gives us this really nice versioning capabilities that powers that timeline. So when you want to go back in time, HBase stores all that stuff very, really efficiently. Some of our data we store in ClickHouse and some other auxiliary databases. But like our flow data, for example, goes in ClickHouse. And that provides really great aggregation capabilities. Um, the downside about ClickHouse is uh, there's more of a schema to it. So it works really well when you know that you're going to have source IP, dest IP, um, source port, dest port, and then you can do some really powerful aggregations on it. Uh, but HBase lets us power storing all of our, you know, EVPN and VXLAN states and all, and all sorts of other states and um, information that we might not even know we want to, to analyze yet, but we can throw that in the database and then make use of it later on. Once it's stored, um, we then send it through to our um, streaming pipeline. We, do, we don't want to turn our clients into polling clients. We want to keep, we really had great, great uh, luck and, you know, we've been really happy with the streaming architecture. So our dispatcher is another one of our components. You know, this backend is all written in Go. Uh, and what it does is it tracks everybody who's interested in a given path update. 
So client applications can say, hey, I'm really interested in routing tables. So anytime an update comes in from a routing table, doesn't matter which API server it hits, um, it'll be sent to one of the dispatchers, and the dispatchers will say, OK, let me think about all the clients that care about the routing table and send it to the appropriate API server, which that client is connected to. So it's the centralized database, which is storing a data, streaming it out to downstream applications, and then those applications can process it. Um, so for example, our analytics might process um, a routing table update, treat an event, uh, and then send it back into the data pipeline. And then that same data pipeline is what the user interface connects directly to. And uh, that's how we then display that information to the user. And now all this is happening really quick, from the storage to it being processed, to it being stored again, to being shown to the user. All of it feels really instantaneous from the end user's perspective. So this is Pete Robinson. I, I understand, obviously, the streaming telemetry, dealing with that in, in real time to the point where it's rendered mm -hmm. with useful context to the, to the operator makes a lot of sense. You've also got the time series for historical you know, look back and analysis. Are you doing anything in terms of analytics of the data to render, um, for example, are you doing any kind of trend analysis of understanding what is a baseline to then identify this was a trend, you know, it's not necessarily a black and white, there was a route in the route table that's no longer there, or you know, a BGP neighbor has dropped, but we're seeing, for example, for capacity planning, we're seeing this was the normative trend, now something has happened that is out of compliance with a, a trend or baseline that we've identified. Are you doing that kind of analytics with NetDS yeah, at this point? Yeah, definitely. So I'll zoom back into the Cloud Vision Cloud here. Um, this actually ends up being multiple round trips um, from the data pipeline to some of our analytics layers. And all of these analytics layers are based on real-time streaming. So to take one example, looking at the hardware capacity. Um, EOS is streaming all of, the, all of the tables and how much they're used. Um, these change infrequently, but you know, when they change, uh, as soon as they're changed, we're notified. That gets then streamed to one of our analytics processes, which is looking at, say, how is this changing over an hourly period? How is this changing over a 30-day period? It's then publishing that trend line back into the data pipeline. And then we have another analytics app, which is looking at all these trend lines that are being published for every single device and saying, are any of these like the slope and the dangerous intersection point, you know, 90% utilization, is any of this going to be happening soon? And if so, I'll create an event, a notification, that can then be displayed to the user and then simultaneously be emailed out or send a Slack message or MS Teams or any other number of notifications there. So it, there's, there's kind of multiple layers there, um, but it's all based, since it's all kind of on the streaming pipeline, it, it works really efficiently. OK, and, and to follow up on that, is that capability is essentially provided out of the box for the customers. They, they leverage Cloud Vision, or is it just we're providing the capability for them to set up that? Yeah, all of this is out of the box in, in Cloud Vision. So this data pipeline is really a generic pipeline uh, that can handle all sorts of data. And then we have a lot of purpose-built analytics so that when users install Cloud Vision, it's just it's telling them useful, interesting things right at that point. OK, thank you. Uh, and to, to the point about it being a generic pipeline, um, Ken touched on this. Um, Cloud Vision doesn't really care about the fact that these might be EOS devices that are streaming data to it. We can go ahead and take a bunch of data from other devices as well. So the formats of data that we expose right, uh, we uh, ingest right now are open config, so any device that speaks open config, or any device that speaks SNMP. Now, SNMP is not really a great, you know, there's traps, but it's not a, a streaming thing. So you need a uh, uh, intermediate process, a sensor. We have one built into Cloud Vision, but you can also deploy a sensor um, locally alongside those devices. That will go and pull SNMP and then turn that into a stream up, uh, up to Cloud Vision. So Cloud Vision is still getting a stream um, over GNMI. But uh, from, from the perspective of, of the switch, you know, we're pulling SNMP. So here's one third-party device. Um, you know, this is, you're going to get less information uh, than you would in EOS device, just because there's less data available over some of these sources. Uh, but you can see this is a Nexus 9K device. Um, uh, uh, it's running 7.0. Here's how many interfaces it has. You can click on the, the Ethernet interfaces listing right here and get a sense of, I'll wait for this to catch up. Um, here's all the interfaces. We only have one, one measly inter interface connected on, on this device. Uh, but you know, uh, almost all of them are running 10 gigabits per second. Uh, but you get that sort of visibility, and Cloud Vision 
um, can provide all this because we're not, we don't have some, some purpose-built database that's only trying to address one or two functions. We're trying to address a, a lot of different functions. And so from the core data layer, uh, we're able to handle all of that. All of that. Um, and then similarly for, for northbound interfaces, we have uh, a variety of API access to Cloud Vision. Clients can obviously access the raw state, the, the direct switch state. But oftentimes what you want when you're trying to automate your network is higher level aggregated data. Like, let me, let me use all the data that Cloud Vision that you're, you're already looking at. Like, show me the events and show me the higher level topology. So we expose a number of modeled endpoints that users can interact with over a couple different transport mechanisms, gRPC with well-typed protobufs, GNMI with Yang modeled, or, or REST and JSON. All of it's the same model. You just got to take your pick of, of how you want to um, interact with the data. So you know we have a GitHub where you can go and, and, and play around with this a little bit more. And Dan will be giving a hands-on kind of <laughs> demonstration of, of extensibility. So that's, that's really how Cloud Vision works. You know, we, we're taking data in from a lot of different sources. Um, we are analyzing it. We're storing it for a long time. Um, we, we've made it hyper-responsive. Um, this diagram looks very similar to what I talked about in 2017. And one, one of the really nice things about that is that our architecture has stood the test of time. Now, we've had to go and optimize a lot of different parts. We've added a lot of different analytics layers and a lot of other applications. But at the end of the day, this, this um, architecture has worked for our on-premises products as we've scaled out the number of devices. And it now works on, on the cloud, where we have thousands of devices for many different customers all streaming into kind of this common data layer. 